The luxury to me is the ability to be yourself, to be at home, to be in a beautiful space where you can actually be who you are. Today, I sat down with Amar Lalani, chair of Standard International, the iconic hospitality brand. We meet at his newest location, The Manor, in Lower Manhattan to discuss the genesis of his career in the business and how real estate is an irreplaceable asset. You have so many locations. How do you possibly maintain and oversee oh, it's, it's, all I, of I, those I, I could, spaces? I can't, I, I've never run a hotel. I, I can't do any of this stuff. I know what I like. I can hope to lead. Okay. I, have some, I have some ideas. What I have does some, that mean you've never run a hotel? I've never been in the operations of a hotel. Okay. So you've always thought of been, yourself never, more as somebody who's creating the mission. I, I just, I just, not that I, no reason other than I never did it. I've never been a general manager. I've never worked the front desk. And it, that probably is my biggest weakness. That I've never done that. But also I think somewhat of a strength because I, I look at all this stuff from a consumer perspective. Mm -hmm. Everything from a guest perspective. And I, so I got in this business because I like it as a guest. Everything I look at from my lens is what a guest is going to think, how a guest is going to react, how a guest is going to enjoy themselves. So that's what I, oddly, that's what I bring to the table more than the business. As a guest, what is one thing you love to experience or see in a hotel when you get into the room? My favorite hotels are the ones where you can walk in the door, take your shoes off, relax, and totally feel yourself and feel at home. The luxury to me is the ability to be yourself, to be as comfortable as you can be, to be at home, to be in a beautiful space where you can actually be who you are. Any thoughts on Airbnb or any competition like that from newer sort of insurgent sure. companies? I think the risk for our industry is that the next generation, my daughter's generation, when they look to travel, they look to Airbnb first, and then they look for a hotel. Our generation, my generation at least, looks at the hotels first and then Airbnb is alternative. Once that mindset has shifted, we're kind of at risk because they were secondary in their mind. The offset to that is that that generation travels a lot more. So I think the whole pie increases. Airbnb takes a big slice of it, but I think the whole pie increases. And I, I think that the hotel companies that are doing commodity stuff, like normal stuff, I think they're most at risk. I think if you think about things like Standard or Bunkhouse or Manor, there's such special experiences. I don't think Airbnb can compete with what we do. You have a very interesting background. You've done a lot of the more quantitative type stuff in your career, and now you're chief creative officer. But tell us a little bit about how you got into the hotel business. I started my career about, I guess, 25 plus years ago. And my first job was at Starwood Capital. And at that time, it was a very small company. And um, Barry Stern, he was the chairman of Starwood Capital. He, this, I guess he took a liking to me and became his assistant. So I ended up falling into the hotel business. In 1997, 98, we bought ITT Sheraton and became the biggest hotel company in the world. I was 22 years old at the time. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was along for the ride. And then I found myself in Asia with him. And what was it like working with Barry? In 1998, when the Asian markets crashed, we took, a, we took a trip to Asia. We're doing 10 cities in 10 days, one after another after another. About four days into the trip, we stopped in Phuket. And I went, this is 1998, I went to the Amman Puri. It's the first Amman hotel ever opened. And I just looked around and I said, couldn't believe the place that magical existed. Mm. So seeing stuff with him was amazing. And then we got to Thailand and I was supposed to meet him at the airport and he, he rang the phone. He said, um, actually one of the other partners rang, rang on the line. I said, uh, Barry thinks this is really interesting. He wants you to stay. I said, stay, stay in Thailand? He said, yeah, stay. I said, how long? Stay indefinitely. So I stayed 10 weeks on that trip. I stayed two years in Thailand. So the thing I learned most from Barry is to, to be bold, to be brave, to take risks, to, to figure it out. And you were supposed to stay in Thailand to run the business there? Yeah, to figure out if we could invest there, to figure out what we could do. And I, ended up, I did end up staying two years in the region. We bought some non-performing loans from the government. We invested in a company called Sanseri, who became the majority investor in Standard. And those formative years for me to just figure out what I was doing and make some relationships and kind of set the stage for my career. It was an opportunity to get out of America and learn and be the only one. That was the only one representing Starwood Capital. I was like 20, 20 whatever, 23 years old. So from a learning experience, I, was, it was, I couldn't imagine anything better. So I worked with Andre, learned a lot from him. He's probably the best hotelier I've ever met. But I realized I couldn't, we, we were different characters and it was hard to work for him. And so I left the company. Why? What was the hardest part? The hardest part is um, he's a creative genius, but the way we do business is very different. And uh, actually part of it was that in order to grow the company, you needed to do things that were kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Revenue management, sales, technology, operations. And that, those weren't his primary interests, mm -hmm. which is understandable. So uh, it was his company. So we do, he wasn't prepared to build the infrastructure needed to actually grow the business, which is, that was his prerogative. So I left, I left, left on great terms. About six months later, he asked me to have dinner with him. And I did, and he said, do you want to come back on board and run the company? I said, okay, but in order to do so, we have to do things differently. I said, how about I find some investors and buy the company? 
because by force of will, by personality, by charisma, by, by age, whatever, he was gonna always be the, the boss. We ended up buying into the, buying the business, buying Andre down to a minority position, and started to grow the business. And then we're really off to the races. We opened the Standard London just before the pandemic, Standard Ibiza, and we've got a pipeline of 30 hotels around the world.